In this video, we're going to talk about the following. We're going to do Lagrange method to maximize the following function f of xy equals x squared plus y squared. Uh, and we're going to have the following constraint on it. So subject to the following negative 4x plus 8y equals to 120. And again, we're going to do the Lagrange multiplier method. And we're going to maximize this f of x function. Okay, so first step is to build what's called our Lagrange function. We take the f, and then we also take the... Um, this constraint. And what we do with the constraint is the following. We reshuffle it around so everything's on one side. So I'm going to reshuffle it like this. Minus 4x plus 8y minus 120 equals 0. Now, you can move everything to either side. It does not matter. You can move everything to the left side or everything to the right side. Whichever one you would like. I'm just going to move everything to the left side. And then we do this with it. We say plus lambda times by and we put that constraint on the inside here of the bracket. We times by that. And then we proceed to take the derivatives with respect to all of the variables. Note that lambda is called a dummy variable. We'll talk more about it later, but um, the Lagrange method is pretty amazing in that we're actually going to find the maximum value for our function, and we're also going to satisfy this constraint at the same time. Again, we'll see why in a minute here. And we do that by adding in this new variable called lambda. And um, it's not actually a variable in the original function, but it has a meaning. We'll again talk about that later. And by putting it in um, later when we take the derivative with respect to lambda, we actually end up um, getting our equation for our, our constraint back, and when we set it equal to zero and solve, we end up solving our constraint here. Okay, so let's go ahead and do the Lagrange method and see what happens. So Lx, partial derivative with respect to x. Um, Lx is going to be um, 2x. Now the y term y squared has no x's in it, so derivative of it compared to x or with relation to x is zero. Now plus lambda times by on the inside, derivative of negative 4x is just negative 4, and that's it. Derivative of the 8y with respect to x is nothing. Derivative of the 120 with respect to 0, or with respect to x, sorry, is 0. Um, so we just end up with 2x plus lambda times negative 4. Ly, same idea, nothing, because there's no y's in the x squared term, plus 2y plus lambda times, now on the inside, nothing, plus uh, derivative of 8y is just 8 minus 0. Okay, and then finally, L lambda. Now this is the special one, so we have a lambda out front of this whole expression right here. Derivative of lambda with respect to lambda is just 1. And then because everything inside of the bracket is attached or essentially has a lambda being multiplied by it, it, um, I like to say, comes along for the ride, so it stays attached to the derivative of lambda with respect to lambda. Now, the first two expressions, the x squared has no lambdas, the y squared has no lambdas, so both of those derivatives are nothing. And then... Uh, again, derivative compared to, uh, with respect to lambda of this last expression, we end up rewriting the constraint here, essentially, and timesing it by 1. We set after that. We do just like we do with the um, multivariate optimization without constraints. What we do is we take all of our derivatives and we set them equal to 0 and we solve. Okay. So now we go solve... We have three equations here, 2x 
minus 4 lambda equals to 0 from the LX. We have 2Y plus 8 lambda equals to 0 for the LY. And we have negative 4X plus 8Y minus 120 equals to 0 for the L lambda. And this last one again is our constraint. We just get it back. Okay. Now, how to solve for all these variables? We're going to solve for x, y, and lambda. Uh, the way that I like best, or the method that I like best, is that I like to isolate lambda. So to the first expression, if I shuffle, uh, actually let's just go back a step here. If I shuffle the 4 lambda to the right side, it becomes positive, and then divide both sides by 4. I get that 2x over 4 is lambda, or if you will, that gives me that x over 2 is equal to lambda. Now, second one here, 2y equals to 8 lambda. Um, that gives that 2y over 8. Um, negative is lambda, but actually let's just back this one up also. So 2y equals to negative 8 lambda. And then divide both sides by negative 8. 2y over negative 8 equals to lambda. And this becomes uh, 2 over 8 is 1 quarter. So y over 4, keep the minus, equals to lambda. So now I have two expressions for lambda, this one and this one. So what I always like to do, I like to do the following steps. Um, step one, what I first did was I set up the Lagrange function. So in my example, that right here was step one. Step two, take derivatives with respect to all variables, including lambda. So this right here, all of these derivatives that I just took was step two. Step three, um, set all derivatives equal to zero and solve. And the way that I like to do that is to do the following. So within that, what I do is I solve for lambda in all possible equations. So Lx has a lambda, Ly has a lambda, so I solve for lambda in both of those, which I did here and here. Now notice, funny enough, L lambda, the derivative with respect to lambda, does not have a lambda in it. When we took the derivative, the lambda uh, turned into a 1. Um, so just these two top equations, we solve for lambda. Uh, and then the next step, which we're just about to do, is set the expressions for lambda equal to each other. Okay, so we're going to get, um, in this case, I'm going to leave a little bit of space here, x over 2 equals to negative y over 4. And that gives that x equals to negative y over 4 times 2. When I go uh, move the 2 up, which gives negative y over 2 equals x. Uh, and so what that does is we now get an expression for x in terms of y. So we set the expressions for lambda equal to each other, and then after that, uh, what we can use that for is solve for all variables um, 
uh, in terms of one variable. In this case, we only have x and y, so it doesn't matter if we had x, y, and z. Try to get everything as an expression of x, let's say. Okay, so example, get all variables as expressions of x. Or if you will in this case, let's say of y. We now just got x as an expression of y or as a function of y. So we could say as expressions of x or functions of x. Or sorry, in this case functions of y. Uh, and then we just go and solve, and then once we get all of those expressions, then we plug all the expressions derived in step two. We plug those all into the constraint. So we have x as an expression of y now. So we know now that x equals to negative y over 2. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to take that expression for x and we're going to plug it into our constraint. Let's go back up here for one minute. Here is our constraint. So we're going to take, and when there is an x right here, we're going to substitute in negative y over 2. So let's see what that gives us. So four, negative 4x four plus 8y minus 120. Negative 4x plus 8y minus 120 equals 0. Um, we substitute in minus y over 2 for the x. And we get uh, 2y plus 8x. Um, and we can pop the 120 to the other side equals 120, or if you will, 10y equals to 120, which gives that y is equal to 12. So we have now solved for y, and we actually have x as an expression of y. x is negative y over 2, so it's negative 12 over 2, which becomes negative 6. And finally, we also know lambda as a function of x and y. So going back here, lambda was x over 2 right here. So lambda is negative 6 over 2. It is negative 3. Okay, so that is how... We do the Lagrange multiplier method uh, and derive our solution. So our solution is actually that we have a maximum for f of x, y at x equals uh, negative 6 and y equals positive 12.